Hey, hello everyone. My name is Eloisa Ramos. Uh, welcome. I'm here with my daughter Sonia, my friend Teresa, and my friend Connie. And we are studying uh, the course in Miracles text. We are on chapter six and section three, the relinquishment of attack. Okay, so paragraph one. As we have already emphasized, every idea begins in the mind of the thinker. Therefore, what extends from the mind is still in it. And from what it extends, it knows itself. The word quote unquote knows is correct here because the Holy Spirit still holds knowledge safe in your mind through his impartial perception. By attacking nothing, he presents no barrier to the communication of God. Therefore, being is never threatened. Your godlike mind can never be defiled. The ego never was and never will be a part of it. But through the ego, you can hear and teach and learn what is not true. You have taught yourself to believe that you are not what you are. You cannot teach what you have not learned. And what you teach, you strengthen in yourself because you are sharing it. Every lesson you teach, you are learning. Okay, so, so it's emphasizing here, okay, that the mind is the only causal level. So every idea begins in the mind of the thinker. That is the cause, original cause, mind. Okay, therefore, what extends from the mind is still in it. So anything, any idea that comes from the mind that begins in the mind and is extended from the mind is shared, um, is still in the mind. Um, it's not something that can leave the mind uh, because where, where, where would it go? Everything is mind. Um, uh, and what it extends, it knows itself. And from what it extends, it knows itself. So, so let's see. So what we tend to do is we tend to look at our past and then we, we make conclusions about the kind of self that we are. Okay, so I look at my past and I say, oh, geez, that was a really mean thing I did, okay, or or, you know, I, I, um, I look at the past and I say, oh, geez, you know, all these people did all, did all these terrible things to me, you know, um, or um, whatever it is that we hold in our mind and believe to be in the past. Okay, these are ideas that we hold on to. And we're going to make conclusions about who we think we are. So, so everything that all of the ideas that come from our mind um, and we hold on to, um, but, but, but we hold on to, but we also, let's see, and we also believe in, and therefore we also teach and we share. So, you know, we tend to share our experiences from the past. Well, you know what happened to me, you know, when I was in kindergarten, da, 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 da. And I had this teacher and, you know, this happened and then this happened. And, and, and from that, I make a conclusion about myself. Or I make a conclusion about teachers. Okay. And so then I say, well, you know, that just goes to show you that you just you just um, can never trust anyone, not even teachers. Okay, <laughs> so I make all these con conclusions about um, or or you know I uh, made a really bad decision in the past. You know how can I ever trust myself or things like that? So therefore, I am untrustworthy. So so the word quote unquote knows is correct here because the Holy Spirit still holds knowledge safe in your mind. Okay, well the Holy Spirit. Okay, holds knowledge about the truth of our perfection. So most of the other memories that we have, those are memories of our ego thoughts about what we think happened to us and what we think that means about us. 
okay? Their judgments, their self-judgments, okay? And then we think that we know my, ourselves and others based on those ideas, okay? Well, the Holy Spirit, which resides in our right mind, knows the truth about what we are because it's still linked, it's our link to truth. And what it knows is that we were created perfect. Okay, that knowledge is still safe there. Okay, and it's not, it, and it's not a judgment. It's not based on judgment. It's impartial perception. It's unbiased, okay? <laughs> because the Holy Spirit does not judge. So if the Holy Spirit knows that we are created perfect, then we are. That's not just an opinion that we made up, okay? So, um, and so that, that is within us to know, come to know if we go within. Um, and the ego, on the other hand, okay, is an idea that attack is possible, that I can hurt you and that you can hurt me. Okay, and a lot of those memories that we have about ourselves and our experiences are based on hurt. We hold on to a lot of hurt, okay, uh, and therefore we hold on to the belief in attack. But the Holy Spirit, which is in our right mind, it, it does not attack anything. And because it does not attack anything, it does not represent a block to the awareness of love, which is our true essential nature. And, and that's the communication that comes through our right mind, um, which, is, which is the communication of God, of, of the loving presence of God, of being, of our true being. Um, and so, so our being is never threatened. Um, uh, so there's complete peace and there's complete safety there when we are in our right mind because we are secure in knowing uh, that our creation is perfect and cannot be changed. It cannot be threatened by anything. And that's the same for everyone else. Um, so number six, your godlike mind can never be defiled. So the mind that is created like God, as the son of God, um, cannot be changed. It cannot be defiled. And so that's contrary to what uh, a lot of religions believe, that, um, that God can be sinned against, that what God created uh, can be made sinful and therefore corrupted, therefore defiled, therefore made unholy. Um, and, uh, and the ego is not a part of that holy mind and it never will be because the ego is the belief in separation. Uh, and the holy mind uh, does not believe in separation because it knows the truth that there was never any separation. So there is never, there's not an ego to the holy mind. So the ego can never be a part of it because it has no reality to the holy mind. Um, however, through the ego, which is a system of ideas and thoughts that we have accepted as true when they are false, we can hear and teach and learn what is not true because we believe it and we teach what we believe. And, and that is why number eight says, you have taught yourself to believe that you are not what you are. So anytime we believe we are imperfect, lacking, bad, you know, uh, sinful, um, not good enough, incomplete, um, uh, broken, um, uh, inferior, superior, uh, any of that, um, then we are believing that we are something um, not perfect, not what we are. And because we believe it, um, 
we cannot teach the truth and therefore we cannot strengthen it in ourselves because uh, teaching is sharing and therefore is strengthening. Um, and so what we end up doing is getting stuck in the ego thought system because that's what we believe and, and therefore that is what we project and that's what we see and that's what we think we are, which is not true, but it's a loop. Um, because every lesson you teach, you are learning. So the practice is really important. The practice of forgiveness is really important to undo that. Yeah. Do you have a question, Connie? No comment? No, it's just, that's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the answer is the forgiveness, the relinquishment of attack. That's basically what forgiveness is. <laughs> you know, it's a decision to relinquish attack and to choose love, right? Uh, yes, and then again, sometimes it feels like if, if you just say that, that, oh, just forgive, it seems a little trite and like, well, is it really doing that? Am I really forgiving or... No. Well, it, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It can be very, very tricky. The way that I learned forgiveness was basically um, a form of separation, you know? Mm -hmm. It was not forgiveness. I, I thought that separation meant that, okay, you did something to me um, that was really bad. And you know what? I'm going to forgive you and I'm not going to seek to retaliate against you, even though you did something bad to me. Okay. So, so forgiveness to me, and, and for me, that meant, well, I'm a better person than you, because I can let it go. Okay. But there's still the judgment is still there that you're sinful. You know, you're a bad person. I didn't let that go. So that's not true forgiveness, because I'm still denying your true the perfection of how we were created. You can't be bad and imperfect and still be as God created you. And therefore, I can't be that way either because I'm seeing you that way. And we're both creations of God. So I'm not seeing with the right mind. I'm not seeing with the Holy Spirit. When I forgive that way, I'm not really forgiving. Well, yeah, of course. But then it really comes back to... The, the need to forgive ourselves because yeah and that's what gets a little bit uh tricky to do it seems for me why yeah. is it why is it tricky well i guess there's that ego part of me that's not wanting to let myself off the hook for some reason okay and and what good does it de do you to keep you on the hook well, nothing, you know, I, my right mind knows that. And hmm, sometimes it's just so darn persistent. Um, and I think there's, there's that little bit of doubt creeps in. Yeah, that well, so it's really about trusting. I mean, it just really about trusting what this is saying is true. Yes, and 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 it is a, a little bit of a, a, a leap of faith at the beginning, like you're saying, okay? Because you have to say, okay, I'm not completely sure that I can, it's a good idea to let myself off the hook, but what do I have to lose here? Yes. So it's really a decision mm -hmm. to trust, okay, um, because, because at some point we realize that, that the suffering is intolerable mm -hmm. when we don't forgive. <clears throat> yes, and, and I, you know, it is easy to do until something occurs, especially for me, it seems, with regarding the body or the health. And it's like, 
oh boy, this is a real, real practice here to get real. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's so something, yes. So there's something about suffering and pain. Okay. And when we look at suffering and pain, okay, is definitely seen as an attack. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pain, hurt, suffering, um, and, and, and therefore illness, okay, is definitely associated with attack. Okay. And therefore, we believe that we have either someone has did it to us or we did it to ourselves. Okay. Yes. And we can either blame God, we can blame a virus, we can blame whoever, the doctor, we can blame ourselves. Okay. Okay. Because we are believing that we are a victim that is that self, okay, that body that is suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're not the body. Yeah, I know. Okay. And that, that's the big, the big deal. That's because. the big deal. That's the big deal because <laughs> it's big. hard. It's really hard to not identify with the body when it it's is. in pain. It really and truly is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, not only that, but we've also learned that through associations, We've learned that, that there is an advantage to suffering, believe it or not. Um, for example, uh, you know, my, um, my daughter took uh, my grandkids to get their shots, okay? And, and then she takes them out for ice cream. So <laughs> my granddaughter is <laughs> telling me, right? And so you do that often enough, and then the child makes an association oh okay pain okay leads to reward to pleasure okay so pretty soon there's this connection that somehow suffering entitles me to reward and that's very deeply ingrained in mm -hmm. our legal legal system legal injury system i mean if you look at a car accident Okay, whoever is at fault has to pay, has to give compensation for damages. Mm -hmm. So all of the civil courts are based on, on compensation for damage. You have to prove injury. You have to prove, um, you know, kind of uh, what would be good compensation. And that's the reward. You know, I, um, I have family members who were in um, auto accidents and uh, were rewarded a hefty sum, you know, because it was an error on the other, the other person's part. And, and unfortunately, that tends to uh, be a temptation to say, oh, you know, um, if I, I'll give you, actually, I'm going to give you a good example here. It's really interesting what happened. Um, so uh, we had a dresser that we, I just put up on, um, you know, on online to sell. It, it was a nice dresser, you know, and, and everything, it was in really good condition. It was just large and okay. So we didn't need it. Anyway, the person that came by who wanted it, um, and it was actually her husband, but when he showed up, he starts looking at it and he starts looking at how it's constructed. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And he's, but he's getting very, very specific, you know, as to how the drawer was made. Oh, it's not, it's not, doesn't have, it's not pegged or something. And, and I'm like, boy, are you like a furniture maker <laughs> or something? He goes, no, you know, but he's looking at all these very detailed things and he goes, oh, takes the drawer out and he's like, oh, look at how the bottom is put together. It only has this little, 
wooden strip there that's holding it up. And I go, yeah, I see that. I, I, and I'm like, but you know, at least it's all solid wood because sometimes it's made with a, you know, that particle wood and that starts sagging. And I'm, I'm like, well, you're probably not going to put a lot of heavy stuff in there anyway. And he's like, no, no, probably not. And then after a while, I was thinking, well, this is really interesting. You know, there's nothing wrong with the dresser, okay? And he's spending a lot of time and effort trying to find something wrong. And then it finally dawned on me. Oh, okay. Maybe he wants to offer me like a lower price, okay? Which I was totally fine with. I was, I just wanted to get rid of it, you know? So, um, so sure enough, you know, uh, he finally said, well, you know, would you take this amount? I forget how much I was asking. I think I was only asking 75. And he said, well, would you take 60? I go, sure. You know, I just need to get rid of it. You know, <laughs> so he could have just asked me at the very beginning. He could have just asked me that. And I would have said, sure. But in his mind, he had to actually find something wrong with it in order to uh, make a case, right, that his offer is was a good a good offer for me or or something there was something about about you know him wanting to offer me less i think that he felt he had to kind of justify it so anyway it was a very interesting interaction but i realized you know i realized that um that there was actually a benefit there for him in finding something wrong that he saw that he could make, quote unquote, get a better deal or actually, you know, a gain from uh, finding something wrong with what he was purchasing, <laughs> which, which to me was really kind of like, uh, it was like, well, you know, we may think that that's how it works in the world, but, but but really, I was ready to let him have it for whatever he offered me. Okay, so it's a misinterpretation of 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 perceiving that there is a benefit in seeing something wrong. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like sometimes, you know, like I work with clients. I was working with a, a small girl, and she she wanted to wear a bandage around her wrist because she told her mom, oh, I slept wrong and it hurts now. Can you bandage it up, you know? But, but it'll be fine by the time I go to my swimming lessons, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was this thing about making something wrong with the body or something wrong with, you know, a dresser, kind of a benefit into, oh, I get to have attention from my friends. And then, you know, they get to ask me, oh, well, what's wrong with your wrist? And, you know, all of this, but there's really nothing wrong. Do you see what I'm saying? So, yes. yes. So, so we want to really look at why there would be a benefit Okay, because, but because basically the mind, um, the body just shows us what we want to see. It's like a mirror. Everything in the world is like a mirror. So we really have to look and dig down deep down into all the repressed stuff, into why we would have some kind of a benefit into holding on to um, something that is painful for us you know, uh, to be able to let it go, because we have to release the benefit that we believe is there. It's not real. It's not a real benefit, you know, like the dresser thing. I would have let him have it for $60 uh, without him trying to see something wrong with it. Um, so anyway, um, so that's what I was saying with uh, unforgiveness, uh, is that we make it up we we there's nothing to forgive okay that's why the course says i forgive my brother for what he never what he did not do you see because whatever we see as wrong or bad is just our own judgment uh -huh. Okay, and, and to forgive we have to let go of the judgment we have to see that we were wrong in our judgment. That's true forgiveness. If I don't let go of the judgment, like I was doing before, 
um, and saying, well, I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to attack you, even though you attack me. Okay, and I call that forgiveness, but I'm still believing that my judgment of you as uh, having attacked me is correct. That's not true forgiveness. Okay, because the mind cannot attack. Okay, we cannot attack ourselves. And to believe that we can would be to produce uh, would be, you know, that the mind is sick, and therefore that's what's going to show up, sickness, because that's the belief. Yeah, that's kind of a long explanation to your question, Connie, but... Is, well, that, that was good and a really good example. So I guess my last question around that is, okay, so needing to forgive the judgment which I get, but how important is it to really skewer it apart to figure out what the actual judgment was? I think that's where I get stuck. It's like, well, you know, where do I see where, because it's it pretty much always is an attack towards myself. Um, well, yeah. so, okay, well, look, well, look. You have to look at the idea of attack towards myself because right off the bat, there's a split mind there. Mm -hmm. you, you need two selves, one that does the attacking and the one that is attacked. Right. Okay. Right. right. So yeah. right off the bat, it's a split mind. Right. And underneath the split mind, what we just read in the previous section is uh, is the forgetting that we are created perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's not possible for you to attack yourself because that requires separation, the belief. Right. It's not possible, but there's still, there's a judgment then. Okay. Which is attack. Well, the judgment is that, that, that what you can attack yourself, which is yeah. a belief in separation. Got it. Yeah. Yes. And and to believe in separation is for the mind to be sick. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the body or the situation will have to reflect the sickness, because that's the belief. No matter how much I think, I'm not thinking that way. <laughs> it's obviously there. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and that's the thing about the split mind. That's how we deceive ourselves. And that's how we hold on to the ego. That's a protection of our ego. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's very tricky and, and very clever because that's how it survives, you know? It does a really good job of hiding. It seems like the deeper you go in this course, too, the more <laughs> things you get to work with. Well, because, you, because we're, it's kind of like trudging, you know, a river that has been... Um, polluted and all the pollution sunk to the bottom and the deeper you go the more dredging you know the more yucky stuff comes out oh okay <laughs> but it only means that you're really getting closer to the bottom you know it just <laughs> it's it's a good sign <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's a good sign. Thank you. I needed to hear that. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I mean, you know, the insanity only goes, you know, so far. And then your mind wakes up and says, Well, come on, okay, this is just too unbelievable to be real. Enough already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, number two, Sonia. Sorry, I took so far off track here. <laughs> no, we're not off track. So it's all the same thing. Okay, Sonia, go ahead. Two. Thank you. 
That is why you must teach only one lesson. If you are to be conflict free yourself, you must learn only from the Holy Spirit and teach only by Him. You are only love, but when you deny this, you make what you are something you must learn to remember. I said before that the message of the crucifixion was, teach only love, for that is what you are. This is the one lesson that is perfectly unified, because it is the only lesson that is one. Only by teaching it can you learn it. As you teach, so you will learn. If that is true, and it is true indeed, do not forget that what you teach is teaching you, and what you project or extend, you believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's what's coming through, Sonia? Um, for me, it, I think it's really about giving and receiving. I mean, at least that's what I'm getting from this. I mean teaching and learning, I mean, it's basically the same. I mean, you can't kind of separate the two. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and so to, to be conflict-free means that we must only teach love, only one lesson, okay? Uh, otherwise, the mind will be split and there will be a uh, deception there. We will not be able to see ourselves as a whole mind. Um, and so the mind needs healing. That's all that that means. Um, and so we return to love once we recognize, okay, you know, just like Connie just recognized, okay, well, now I, I can return to love, return to, to the knowing that oh, I misperceived myself. I really cannot attack myself. That's not true, okay? Um, I am only love. Teach only love for that is what you are. And that's what forgiveness is. It's the decision to, um, to choose love so that we can remember, to kind of ingrain that that ingrain it, uh, retrain our mind. <laughs> away from believing that we are not love, that we are, you know, attack, that we are guilty, um, that we are separate. That's the um, undoing. That's what we want to undo. Um, because because that's, that's the message of the ego. And it's not true. Even though we believe it, that's what we need to let go of believing. Um, okay, uh, num paragraph three. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit, because as you see his gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Once it can accept this fully, it sees no need to protect itself. The protection of God then dawns upon it, assuring it that it is perfectly safe forever. The perfectly safe are wholly benign. They bless because they know that they are blessed. Without anxiety, the mind is wholly kind. And because it extends beneficence, it is beneficent. Safety is the complete relinquishment of attack. No compromise is possible in this. Teach attack in any form and you have learned it and it will hurt you. Yet this learning is not immortal and you can unlearn it by not teaching it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, we search for safety all of our lives, and, but we search for it externally for the most part. And what it's saying here is that safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit. And, um, and the Holy Spirit does not attack. It cannot attack uh, because 
it cannot see separation. There's nothing to attack. Everything is the same as itself. Um, so because as you see his gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Okay. So as we recognize we are all one and created by a loving um, creator uh, in its likeness, um, we begin to perceive that in ourselves and others. And so the mind, um, the mind recognizes that it is perfectly harmless. Um, and once it recognizes that it is perfectly hum harmless because its true nature is loving, a lot of times we become afraid of our own nature because we learned incorrectly that our nature is maybe um, instinctive, you know, like animal, like, you know, kill or be killed, survival stuff, okay? Um, and so um, we identify with that physical carnal kind of um, uh, instinct to defend and attack territory and, you know, all of that. Um, but, but that's not what we are, because we're not a body, uh, we are spirit. And so, um, and so the protection, the need to protect is a misidentification of what we are. Um, you know, we're identifying with the survival of the body. So the protection of God dawns upon the mind, assuring it that it is per perfectly safe forever. Um, once we recognize that we are mind and only mind um, and that the mind is totally harmless because it is not separate from other minds. There is no such thing as separate minds. We're confusing the mind with a brain when we think there are separate, separate minds. And the brain is an organ of the body. Um, so we're confusing body with mind. Um, and the perfectly safe are wholly be benign because they do not see threat. So, so to see threat is what activates all of that survival stuff. And um, to see oneness is to perceive no threat. So therefore, it's to be perfectly safe. Um, and so the mind that recognizes its oneness is perfectly safe and blesses um, because it knows that it is blessed as one, one mind, one self, one son of God. And you can see that, I think, uh, you know, the, the life of Jesus Christ it was a wonderful expression of forgiveness and love um, without attack. So, so without anxiety, the mind is wholly kind because it extends beneficence, extends beneficence. Because it extends beneficence, it is beneficent. And that's what it was saying at the beginning that we know ourselves from what we extend. Um, so safety is the complete relinquishment of attack and to release attack means that we have to not be able to see threat and to not be able to see threat means that we, um, we have released the belief in separation and recognize that it never happened. So we, that's the acceptance of the atonement. Uh, no compromise is possible in this. Teach attack in any form and you have learned it and it will hurt you. And it will hurt you because that's what the belief of attack is. It's the belief that I can be hurt, uh, that you can hurt me and that I can hurt you. Okay. Um, and, um, and that's what I would be teaching and that's what I would be learning. So yet this learning is not immortal and you can unlearn it by not teaching it. So it's a mind training. Yes, we have definitely learned. And I would say that it's, we've learned it so well, we call it the instinct, you know, the survival instinct. Uh, 
but it's not separate from us. It's just that we have practiced it so often that becomes automatic and it's and it can be unlearned because it's not true. Uh, it's not part of our true nature. OK, uh, number four. Since you cannot not teach, your salvation lies in teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. This is how you will learn the truth that will set you free and will keep you free as others learn it of you. The only way to have peace is to teach peace. By teaching peace, you must learn it yourself because you cannot teach what you still dissociate. Only thus can you win back the knowledge that you threw away. An idea that you share, you must have. It awakens in your mind through the conviction of teaching it. Everything you teach, you are learning. Teach only love and learn that love is yours and you are love. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it all circles back to um, being love and being loving. And that's what we teach. And everything we do, we teach. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. we are, we teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that requires complete separation from ego through forgiveness. Yes, but but you do but you let's see i i know what you i know what you mean except that you, you use the word separation <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> separation we, from, we from the ego. ego because it really are not separate it's just you're ignoring that <laughs> well you're what you're doing is you're recognizing with the holy spirit it's that it's not true mm -hmm. that it never happened that's what i meant <laughs> yeah no i know that's what you meant <laughs> <laughs> I used a shortcut, <laughs> but, but the word was confusing because yes, it, it was, is. Yeah, it is. yes. So we want to we want to discern um, what is true from what is not true. Separation is not true. It's a belief in what is not true that never happened. Okay, and it's fearful because it it. Uh, to believe it means that attack is possible because it makes the body real. The body is a symbol for separation. And it also makes the idea of death real. Um, and, um, and, and therefore uh, very fearful to be a body. Um, so, um, so it makes it difficult to teach love when we are in a place of fear, because that's what we're going to teach um, instead of love. So the awakening of the mind is really, um, <laughs> it's very interesting, is to teach, to teach the exact opposite of everything the ego believes, <laughs> because that's the sleeping mind. And the ego believes in separation because that's what it believes it is. And when we identify with the ego, that's what we believe we are separate from source and not loving. So we have um, denied or forgotten or uh, let's see. Um, deceived ourselves into believing something that is not true about what we are. Okay. Okay, so that's the section relinquishment of attack. Um, and anything else before we stop? Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, till next time, we'll continue with the next section for the only answer. Okay, bye, see you. Bye.